it's gonna be some kind of it's going to be some kind of uh, some talking and uh, thinking about our real situation and the real challenges, something like that. So I'm going to share some slide and um, you can take it. And uh, after these lectures, I'm, I'm going to hand over my slide to the Jeff and then you can get from Jeff. So, okay, I am not my, I'm going to start it. Okay, here it is. Okay, here it is. Okay, everybody can uh, see the, my slide. Okay, everything is clear. Okay, so today is, I'm going to talk about missionary church in the local context. So this, I show some kind of diagrams. It's uh, only based on my own, no, own personal opinions, not just general opinions. So nowadays, many people know, well know about some missionary church because, because it's, it's word, word spread in the worldwide interesting for the student. It's a theological student and pastor and even missionary. So today, I, yeah, I realized many people well, already know, well know about the missionary church. So here is some diagrams. It's, um, first, it's uh, early church. It's, I think it's... Uh, Early church is uh, one of the best model for the missionary church. I want to emphasize this missionary church is not new things. It's just kind of a, it's a real genuine church. So it's a, I think it's an early church can be some kind of best model for the missionary church. But this di diagram is go graphics go down to the on around the 20 and 25 is the, that era is the Christendom. And so maybe in most of you well know about the Christendom. And in the days of many churches became like an institutional church and uh, they try to expand their kind of a church based on their power. So it's a uh, little bit far away from the true missionary church. So that's why I placed the Christendom, but it is a low. And then after that, we experienced a reformation and then it's a re-reformation. So basically the, through the times, uh, many people uh, recognize and realize what's the true church and they, they freely ask the, what kind of thing is to, to be a true church before God and something like that. But it's uh, when the time of the modern church is a little bit changed and it goes down because in the days only people, many people only think about some kind of a growth and the size of a church and that. So they it's a lost some kind of a core value of the church. But in the, in the 1952, it's in the days, uh, 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 we call that Billingham World Mission Council. In that it's a council, it's uh, most of the leadership in the world, they think of us God's missions. And then um, they realized that we, for a long time, we lost the God's mission. It's just our mission and church's mission. So through the times, so it's, a, it's a worldwide, it's a, every church in the world is get to know we need to recover the God's missions. So this is the good motivation to, to rethink about some church. Then it's uh, 1998, it's, uh, it's a very important book is published. The title is Missionary Church. And so it's, uh, based on that, it's, uh, most of people rethinking, rethinking about the church and they get to know more about the missionary church. But after 10 years, it's a uh, graph is going go, go down because it's uh, uh, in short time, people have a big interest in the missionary church. But after 10 years and the 12 years, they lose their interest in, uh, in the missionary church because it's really, really different from the, what they expect. So many people left and um, I don't like it. And I, I don't have any interest in missionary church. I need more new thing. And, more powerful thing and something like that. But nowadays I have some kind of a positive uh, is a thinking for the missionary church because for it's, um, after 10 years and 12, 20 years, many pastors, many missionaries and many workers rethinking about their true church and the many things happen in the kind of, uh, after the millennial times, everything is changing, rapidly changing. So, People really seriously think about some what's the true church. 
even in the time of the COVID-19, we cannot go to the church and we cannot attend the it's a worship service. So it's a people, people is drew this kind of a, this kind of question, what's the church? That's the why people is to have some big interesting missionary church again. So that's why I drew this kind of a, it's a kind of graph. It's, but it's a, already I mentioned that it's not some kind of academical, it's a graph and any general graph is based on only my personal opinion. But yeah, I think most of part is very true that it's a tendency, kind of a tendency of the people is uh, have some interest, having interest in the missionary church. So we want to start this basic questions, what's the church? If we have enough time that I want to ask this question to the, uh, so, yeah, in person and then, or so, it's a people by people, but it's a, we do not have enough time. So I'm gonna keep going on. So one thing I want to point out is uh, what is, what's the church is the, should be a, some kind of ongoing questions. And so we are have some kind of theological education background. So, so we easily try to find the function and the right answer for the questions. So based on the book and the voice of some big scholar, but this, this question should be kind of an ongoing question, not just uh, it's a question for the academic answers and, and the theological answers. Yeah, we, you should keep in mind this, that the not question and answer, this is the, the but question and responses. We always is frequently draw this, uh, these questions for our ministry and for ourselves, then not answer. So we need response in our, based on our own context and the, or the kind of situations. So that's why I mentioned that what's the church is should be ongoing questions. I, I brought some kind of a biblical illustrations. It's a, everybody know, well know about this passage. Genesis chapter 12, verse one to three. God called out Abraham. So just one time I read these Bible verses. The Lord has said to Abraham, leave your native country, your relatives and your father's family and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into the great nations. I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to the others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the family on the earth will be blessed through you. Everybody well know about this and uh, maybe many times it's, uh, it's um, gave us some preaching that based on these Bible verses. But I, I do believe it's, uh, this is very important because it could be uh, some kind of a beginning of the, our church understanding and uh, also in the same time is the mission, understanding for the mission. It's a uh, yeah, let's think about some just before this Genesis 12. It's a, when he moved to the Genesis 11. If we pick the, just one word to describe the Genesis 11, it's going to be some kind of darkness. It's a, when we open the Bible, Genesis 11, we can meet the Babel Towers. It's a, every people is get their own powers together to against the God. So it's, we can call that day is, as a darkness, but not just for the days. Uh, when you look at the situation of the Abraham, also he, we can say that he, in the, he was in the darkness. You know that is, uh, in the days he lost his uh, uh, property and um, he already lost his father and, um, and his wife, only wife couldn't, is, uh, couldn't have a baby. So everything is uh, not good. And um, maybe we can say that uh, he didn't have anything to smile about it, that just the darkness, his life is under the darkness. But when he was in the darkness, God called out Abraham and he looks like a commanding, but it's not actually, it's not a commanding. It's a God say, leave your native country, your relatives, your fathers and family. You know, so I, I will show some kind of Hebrew word. I'm not, I'm not scholar, it's a, only it's a, I find that meaning is from the book. So God say, live and go. Live and go is, a, so when you look at the Hebrew Bible, it's a, use this word, halak. 
Halak means it's a basic meaning is a walk. So we, we can easily think it's uh, now God say you go. It's uh, just a, it's my order. But it's a halak has the little different meaning. It's mean the walk along. So it's not order. It's kind of invitations. Now God invited Abraham to walk together. So you, you know that it's a before God meet the, met the, it's a Abraham. Already God is a start his uh, kind of a ministry of the salvation for the whole world. Then he worked his own way. Then now he invited it's Abraham is come and we can walk together. So you, you should know that mission is not just the ordering and the going and something that it's a, maybe it's a, most of part of the mission, it contains the kind of a meaning of the invitations. It's a halak mean is invitations. Now God say, just walk with me and walk with me and uh, we can go together. So halak means come and work in the way I was working. I am working. That's God said. And the another, another is a important the word in this Bible verses is, is blessing. Everybody know that meaning of the blessing. But blessing in Hebrew word is barak. Barak means is uh, basic meaning is kneeling down. It's our knee. That's the meaning of the barak. So it's a when it when I checked the usage in the days, it's a barak means is a kind of a vitality to be more like own beings. So. In the some easier way to describe this, it's an easier way to describing this verse. Then mean is uh, just come and walk with me, and you will be my people. So blessing mean became the God's people. So it's a, you can say that it's a, if if there is some kind of trouble and some kind of a challenge. But through the times, if you be more like the uh, God's people and uh, some kind of uh, disciples, then we can say challenge and trouble can be our blessing because it makes us more like God's people. So blessing means is barak, kneeling down. It's just accept and admit to the God's own plan for us and the God's kind of own image, our own image, original image. It's when God is allowed it and we can accept it. That's the true meaning of the blessing. So now, now it's God invited Abraham and uh, it's we can walk together. Then you're going to be some blessing. It means just go and raise up my people. You will be tenor and you will be true and you will be my instrument to raise up the more God's people. That's the meaning of these Bible verses. It's a, people try to translate this Bible verse into the it's a Greek word. So people choose the one word for the halak. That word is kaleo. Kaleo means is call out. So that's why people choose the kaleo when it translates this Bible into the Greek word. So it's a call out to be blessing from the darkness. That's the life of the Abraham and the situation in the Genesis 12. You know, ek, ek kaleo, it's ek mean is a kind of out, it's from, it's outwardly, and the kaleo mean call. So when you combine the ek and kaleo, it became ek kaleo. It's ek kaleo is the origin of the church. You know, the great word for the church is the ecclesia so ecclesia became ecclesia so church means that is calling out from the darkness that's the true meaning of the church to be a blessing for the whole people so this that's the is a, here is the reason why i say this by these verses can be some kind of beginning of the church and the beginning of the missions because through this meeting God show his, uh, his uh, kind of a worldwide plan for the whole people. And in the same time, he emphasized uh, how to do it. So he called out Abraham in not just for him, it's just for the whole people. So calling Abraham is, uh, we can say the virtual beginning of the church and the missions. But one more thing I want to emphasize in this slide 
It's a church mission, not separated. In, in the same time, in the same situations, God began his own church, began his own mission through the Abraham. And the, maybe you already know that the verse in the Galatians is that when we are in the Christ, we, iner we will inherit the whole legacy and the whole is a blessing. It's a from the Abraham. So that's why when we are in the Christ, we will work through the same way it's uh, everyone worked. So that's why we can say that based on these Bible verses, we can, this is kind of a virtual beginning of the beginning of the virtual church and the beginning of the a virtual mission for, it's for us. So it's a, when you check the Old Testament more, the, we can find the three, it's a kind of a three identities of the Israel. First one already we mentioned that in Genesis 12, it's uh, Israel's people should be like a blessing to the nations. And second one is uh, when you look at the Exodus chapter 19, it's uh, God called Israel as a kingdom of priests. And the third one is when you look at the Isaiah chapter 42, verse one to six and uh, chapter 49, God called Israel as a light to the nations. So these things is uh, three, it's the uh, identity of the Israel. When it comes to identity, so we need to think about this is kind of short questions. In normally people, is, uh, when it comes to the identity, normally people firstly think about their own right. You know, it's a, when you read the Old Testament, many times Israel insists something based on their right. We are chosen people. We are special. We are your people. People easily think about firstly right, but it's wrong. It's a we. It's a better way for us to think about more. It's a, about responsibility first. If Israel is a think about more about responsibility, they will. They maybe went to the different way, but whole Bible only they insist always insist their own right and their own some kind of portion and something that based on their its identity. It, I think it's the same to us. It's a, as a pastor, as a, some kind of a church leadership, as a Christian, which one you, you think first? If you think right first, you're not going to be a good pastor and you're not going to be a good Christian. If you think about more about responsibility first, I'm sure that you will be a good pastor and a good leadership and a good Christian. But awfully, it's the Israel only think about their right. So they lost and they, lo they lost their own mission and own calling and they went the wrong way. So here is a, it's a Bible verse from the New Testament. It's a, I, I try to the combine the Genesis 12 and um, in the same time, the three identity of the Israel. When you look at that, this Bible verse is explain the whole things. First Peter chapter two, verse nine to 10. God called out the people of God. I read it for you. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belong to God, that you may declare the promise, praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received the mercy, but now you have received the mercy. Can you find that it's uh, in the first part of this Bible verses that Peter mentioned about some identity. Then he mentioned about who calls you out of darkness. You remember the word kaleo, ek kaleo. Ake kaleo means it uh, became a church. So even we are, it's uh, Genesis, Genesis is in the Old Testament in the Peter, first Peter in the New Testament but they are, have some kind of a time gaps and uh, different people wrote that, but they have a same, it's a story. It's a connected story and it's one story. So we need to see the Bible as one grand narrative story. So this is the same thing, it's a, it's a Peter is mentioned the same principle and the same story from the Genesis 12. 
So church is the people of God to be blessing for the whole nations. If we change this, cha- this sentence in the easier way, church should be a church should be a kind of a tool for the God's mission to raise up the people is all over the world. That's the mean, true meaning of church in the same time that is the true meaning of the missions. So now is so when you look at the Matthew chapter, Matthew Gospel chapter first, it's a chapter 12, 28, verse 12, 20, it's Jesus said, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the ages. It's not just encouragement for the, that time for the disciples. Because God invited Abraham and now inviting the whole God's people. It means I will walk with you because you will stand the way I'm walking. So that's why it's not just the temporal and instant, instantly it's the encouragement for the disciples when, he, when Jesus sent them out, that is based on the whole story because that's the way God and Jesus working together. So I, I, I sure that that is the, can be some beginning of the church and the beginning of the missions. So yeah, this is, here is some quotations. As Snatcher uh, mentioned that the church is one of the few organization in the world that does not exist for the benefit of its members, all members. The church exists because of God. In its infinite wisdom and infinite mercy, choose the church as its instrument to make him know his manifold wisdom in the world. I highlighted that does not exist for the benefit of its members. You know, today many churches only exist for the benefit of their own members, not just the outside of the church. They spend the most of the money and they provide any, many kinds of service for the old members, not just the, it's the people outside of the church. That's the big differences. Here's another quotation from the, it's a, by Leslie Newbegin. Without missions, the church is simply fall to the ground. We must say frontally that when the church sees to be the mission, to a mission, then he, she ceases to have any right to the title by which she is adorned in New Testament. Without mission, church is meaningless. That's, that's the point of the lesson that you begin. Here is some Bible verses. It's a very interesting. You know this uh, situation, Act, uh, act is uh, chapter 5, verse 38 to uh, 39. In the days, it's a Christian and uh, kind of a Christian community is a grow with this uh, rapidly grew and the Jewish people it really didn't like it because they crucified the Jesus and um, they is uh, against the Christianity so that's why they really didn't like this kind of uh, growth of the it's, uh, Christianity so they ask some kind of uh, some solution and uh, some ask some kind of advice to the Gamaliel is one of the best readership in their own community. This Bible verse is the answer from the Gamaliel. He say this, therefore in the present case, I advise you, leave this man alone, let them go. For if their purpose or activities of human origin, it will be fail. But if it is from God, divine origin, you will not be able to stop this, being, this man. You will only find yourselves fighting against them. He mentioned about purpose or activity. Then if we, those things has kind of a human origin, then it's, uh, you don't need to do anything for the, to prevent them because they will disappear automatically because it has, uh, it has a human origin. But if they have some divine origin, you will not be able to stop this man. So that's why either way, only thing you have to do is just uh, let them go and leave them alone because it's not belong to you. I think it's very important because um, you know, it's, uh, when it comes to human origin, what kind of thing is a, is a pop up in your head? We can say that kind of a tradition 
and culture and is there some kind of advantages, preference, finance. These things is based on the human origin. Nowadays, many churches, I, I can ask this question to each of you that it's a, you can think about your church in Korea or your home church. It's a purpose and activity. It's a, we can combine two words into one word is ministry. It has a divine origin or human origin. It is based on the tradition or based on culture and advantage and preference and finance, or is based on the God's will, God's mission and God's spirit and divine word and divine wisdom. Maybe you know that answers and you feel something it's, uh, when I ask these questions for your congregations. All the church, their purpose, their activity only based on the divine origin. So even they are small, even they don't have any social power, but nobody can overcome that because they have a divine origin. You know, that's the important, but still many people only think about finance and some kind of social power and size and some kind of charismatic leadership and some kind of tradition and our preference, that's not the divine reasons. We need to think about, rethink about our purpose and activity. That those things are where it's, a, it's a origin of the, those things is from where. So I, I added this slide just before the lectures because uh, I think it's, I will meet uh, some kind of uh, theological student and um, you already some church leadership and uh, analyst, you will be a church leadership. So I added this slide just before just lectures. This is kind of a congregation of like, like a life cycle. So most of the congregation follow this way, birth, growth, stability and decline and death. So this, this, this kind of cycle is for the kind of human organizations. Human organization always follow this way. So in the day of the birth, they has a potential and vision and some kind of a, we, 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 in the days they focus on the maturation. And the, in the day of the growth, sorry. In the, when, when they face the growth, sorry, is the, is the stop. So it's uh, when it's uh, in the stage of the growth, is uh, they experience energy and excitement and some unexpected life and uh, natural progresses. Then when it's when they is uh, alive, that the stability, some feel the fulfillment, accomplishment, predictability, and nostalgia, and uh, they think about some past time and something that. But it's a uh, suddenly it's a. Uh, they is uh, moved to the decline and it's uh, they experience anxiety, fear and denial and paranoia and conflict. Then they will that is uh, experience that. But we, we, before we move to the decline, we have, uh, we need to have something to change this curve. So for the church, so it can be some spirit and it can be some kind of vision it can be some kind of our calling and something that. Even in the, the, even in the ministry, of, ministry of the missionary, many people experience this kind of cycle. But just after the stability, we need to rethink really about some our station. When he's satisfied with the stability, most of our congregation, most of our ministry will move to the decline. That's your very, that is very nature. So, we have a three kinds of process not to move to the decline. First one, redefinition. And second one, redevelopment. And the third one, replanting. I will, yeah, I place this chart to explain it. I'm not gonna it's, uh, read the whole things. So I only read the redefinition columns. We need this kind of uh, questions when we experience kind of stability. First one, why are, you, why are we here? So it's uh, related to the purpose. 
what is God calling us to accomplish? What's the, our original calling and something that? How will we effectively done in our context? Check our ministry and um, it just uh, we look inside to find out some kind of uh, some problem and any some yeah some old, old part of ministry. And what working now? And would any anyone notice or care if we cease to be ex exist? It's a meaning, and uh, we have still have a value and something there. So this kind of questions we need to draw this kind of question to care about our congregation before we move to the decline and dominated by the, some kind of a deep human reason. Because normally when he, when he is uh, alive that the stability stays, maybe some people has some kind of uh, achievement, some big readership and some have some kind of big contribution and something there. So in, from the times their voice and their will have some kind of overpower for the whole congregation. Then congregation move to the some deep, it's the wrong way. It's based on the human reason, something there. So I briefly explain this curve and this chart. You will lead again when you receive this slide. But as a church leadership, it's a, we need to find out where we are and the, why, where we're heading for and something there. If not, easily, <clears throat> some kind of a human origin have a overpower for the whole uh, its congregations. So lesson that you begin is to say that is uh, the separation of these two things, uh, two things in mission and church, which God has joined together. We already check it based on the Genesis 12. Must be judged one of the greatest calamity of the missionary history and the healing of this division, one of the greatest tasks of our time. <clears throat> because still many pastors think it's a church belong to pastor and the mission belong to missionary. Church belong to seminary and mission belong to mission agent, something there. But this kind of separation <clears throat> is one of the greatest calamities, disasters of the missionary history. So one of the most important part of our church ministry is we need to recombine together. <coughs> many people say, so whenever I share this kind of things, many people say, I know. Easily they say, I know. But it's, uh, I add this slide to check this out. Knowing is different to living, different from the living. You know this, I, I brought this uh, verse, Bible verses from the Bible. He answered, I am a Hebrew and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made this sea and land. Maybe already you know that, I, I know that verse, Bible verses. Yeah, we were right. It's a uh, it's word of the Jonah on the ship heading for the Tarshish, not Nineveh. Yeah, this speaking is very great. We are when, when it, we, uh, many pastors is uh, give a great sermon and great speaking and preaching. We can say, "I am Hebrew. I am people of God. I am worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land." What a one, wonderful and great is uh, description and uh, some speaking, but problem is here. Now Jonah speaking this speak this is on the ship heading for the Tarshish, not Nineveh. Knowing is different from the living. We need to check not our knowledge, our life. Mission flow, flow from to the God's missions. So just after the, it's a, the four of the people that he decided to save people and list all the whole of our creations. So God's mission started. Then is uh, he called Abraham and he became of Israel's missions, and um, it's uh, based on the, some kind of prophecy and the, some promises. Is that Jesus came, and the Jesus is uh, did his own missions. Then he promised the uh, it's the Holy Spirit and uh, it's uh, upon the church that is uh, it it started the church mission. 
So it's not separated. It's not some kind of a mix. It's just a flow. It's from the God's mission and Israel mission and Jesus mission. And today is it belongs to the church. So God's mission. So we, we can it's understand God's mission based on this kind of simple some descriptions. The Bible is a is a historical record of God's mission. Whole Bible is a record of the God's mission because this beginning is from the creation and Paul and restoration, recreation. Whole Bible story is a uh, contained. It's a uh, it's based on the kind of a God's record of the God's missions. So God's mission is, is uh, his long-term purpose and intention to the rest of creation, all of the human life, and story of the restoration against the backdrop of the creation and the sin. That's the Bible, and it explains the whole God's missions. So, so we, we can say this, why you just really angry? God did not turn away from the world, bent towards the destructions but turn to face it in love with the patience and the tender care. The Lord set out on the long road of redemption to reclaim the lost as his people and the world as his kingdom. That's the God's mission. Whole Bible is uh, talk about it and the uh, whole Bible exists for the explain and let us know about the God's mission. Then already I showed that it's a storyline runs through the Israel Jesus Church in the with the spirit. God works in the through the people for the salvation of the whole nation, all of human life, all of creation. So we can say this is I brought some quotations. Our participation in God's mission, how we can, how to be is in God's mission. Fundamentally, our mission, if it is biblically informed and validated mean our committed participation as a God's people, because God invited us at God's invitation and command in God's own mission within the history of God's world for the redemption of God's creations. Here's another quotation. God's mission involves God's people living in God's way in the sight of the nations. One more is quotation. Mission is not primarily about going, nor is uh, mission primarily about doing anything. Mission is about being. It is about being a distinctive kind of people and counterculture community among the nations. So it's gonna be a last, last slide for the first session. Okay, after that, so we can have a break time. God's mission and his people. It's a, I, I want to define the it's a relationship between the God's mission and his people. Location or place of God's leading people work. God's work in his people. And at the same time, it's God's people, his people instrument or channel of the God's leading people work. God works through these people. And uh, now we say that his people, but his people mean is today can be a church. Church is not a building, church is not a denomination. It should be some kind of a congregation of the God's people. So it's a church is not, uh, not separate from the God's mission, it's one. And uh, when you understand the whole, some this kind of relationship, we can move to the, it's a better understanding for the true meaning of the, church and especially missional church. Still, I have some, some, some number of the slide for the first session, but I think so we need to have some break, then I will yeah, learn, learn more fast in the next session. Okay, Chang Su, thank you for your uh, teaching. And it's now um, time to have break. So it's 43 past two. And why don't we just come back uh, in about, so we ha we're gonna have 12 minute break. So come back uh, five to three. Okay, so we'll meet, at, we'll meet you at, um, yeah, 2.55. Okay, sure. All right, I'll see you soon. Have a good break. I'm gonna start with this slide. It's, um, 
And the first, uh, firstly, when I prepare these lectures, I divide into two parts. It's the first part is the biblical understanding. Actually, it's a 40 minutes of kind of a basic understanding for the mission of church. And the second part is uh, could be kind of practical, practical understanding for the missionary church. So mainly in second part, I'm going to talk about some kind of practical and understanding for the mission of church. So already I showed this slide and um, everybody already understand this one is a mission flow from the gas mission to the church missions. So uh, when it comes to missionary church, it's a kind of a three, Trinitarian understanding is very important. This quotation is uh, by Howard Snyder. It's, I will it's, uh, underst I read this sentence for you. Mission of God means this. God, the Father sends the Son into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to bring the salvation in all its dimension, including ultimately the reconciliation of all things, the kingdom of God in its fruitfulness. The church's mission derived from this action of the tree on God. It is to embody and to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of salvation through the Jesus Christ. So uh, maybe you know that it's uh, some kind of uh, order of the Trinitarian, the tree on God is a whole it's a story for the whole Bible. It's God sent his son and his son is sent the spirit and spirit sent the church to the whole nations. Actually, this is a whole Bible story. So to understand in the mission of church properly, it's a Trinitarian understand, understanding is very uh, core part to understand the mission of church and uh, it's a kind of essence of the church and something like that. So it's gonna be a last Bible illustration to explain the meaning of the mission of church. So this John gospel chapter 20, verse 19 to 22. So. And in the days, uh, maybe you know this story. It's uh, after the Jesus is uh, died on the cross, and uh, it's a disciples is uh, gathered together in the small room and close their window to the out outside because they had some kind of fear and uh, some anxiety because they lost Jesus, and um, every day their plan is uh, kind of uh, is uh, changing. So. In, in the fear, is, uh, with the fear, they gather together. In the, in the night, is, uh, Jesus came to them and uh, he said, peace with you. And uh, two times. Then he said, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. That's a very wonderful and great expression and um, word for us. Because as I want to emphasize one point in this Bible verses. So Jesus say, peace with you, as the Father has sent me, as I sending you. It means we, we're going to be part of the grand narrative. So already I mentioned that Trinitarian understanding. So it's a, there is some Jesus work and here is some our work. It's not correct. It's a, this simple sentence mean, as the step, Father says, sent me, I am sending you, mean, you're gonna be part of my story and you're gonna be part of my redemptive story. So still, a, we are on the same story from the Abraham because God invited Abraham and then we can walk together. So on the way, Jesus say, as my father sent me, based on the Trinitarian understanding, I'm sending you. It mean our identity is not just a kind of a, suddenly happen is that our our identity based on the historical grand narrative and some kind of a gas redemptive work that's the very important because it provides us true peace even we are in the trouble and in the day of the challenge so we can believe and we can it's a, we can be as a faithful because we do believe this kind of uh, some big story and uh, we became a part of the story. So then it's a when you realize, when, when you understand fully this kind of order, then our ministry and our church can be, have some kind of divine wisdom based on this kind of, uh, it's a God's word. So I prepared some short video clips because some of you from the sign of uh, maybe some people say that it's when I mention about mission, easily, normally people 
a pastor from the Africa or the pastor from the Asian country, they easily say that it's our church too small, it's our church located in some kind of rural area, and uh, our people is not so uh, fully educated. Some, they make a lot of excuses. So when I saw that, this, I, when I watched this video clip, it's just less than five minutes. So it, it totally changed my mind because every church, everybody can do something for the mission and mission can change their life. So I prepared these things and it's a bit short video clips. question that they kept on telling us was this we love to support missions we love to support missionaries but we don't have money how can we support a missionary when the church cannot even support the pastor So the churches became really excited when they heard about the possibility of developing a farm for missions. There was actually this church who was already, uh, who has already raised funds for the repair of their roof. And when they heard about this mission farm, they decided to set aside that amount and donate it for the mission farm. para sana na tinutulong namin sa inyo para sana yun sa atip namin kaya lang mas mabigat ang loob namin magtulong sa misyon dahil hindi lang yun sabing ano para sa Panginoon yun eh hindi yun para sa amin kami ma nakakatiis kami na matutuluan pero kami willing kami magtulong sa misyon kaya ang misyon na nais magsuporta sa mga missionary uh, local and abroad. Kami na nagbigay nung, nung pera na yon, sila na na-realize na, na nila na pinagpala din sila ng Panginoon. Ma, ma, ano, mayaman, ma, walang ano doon, kubo-kubo lang yung mga bahay doon. Pero masaya sila and natutuwa sila na, na naka, kami Ang, ang simbahan no, sila ay party para sa corporate farm. Uh, talagang uh, masayang masaya ako sa uh, gawain tulad nito. Dahil po, uh, una sa lahat, uh, bilang isang kristyano, makapag-share tayo sa mga laborers. At saka, uh, para sa aking sarili, uh, wala nang pinakamaganda o pinakadabes na bagay yung maglingkod tayo sa Panginoon. At yung magawa natin kung ano yung Magandang klase sa lupa at uh, parang mataba siya, maganda sa pananim at uh, kahit anong klaseng tanim pwede siya. Kaya nag-desire kami ng open pa, para sa farm para makakatulong sa marami mga tao dito sa Palawan. Lalo sigit sa ministry ng Panginoon at matulungan din natin ang mga tao sa community para sila rin ay matuto sa pag uh, idea ng paano itanim yung mga klaseng tananim like ng daging, banana, kamuti, mais, palay, higit sa lahat yung pinaka-target ng farm nito is uh, rubber plantation. I am very convinced that God will provide their needs, not just 10 times more, but 100 times more, because they were willing to give everything uh, for the missions, for the gospel. And so I know that uh, this church will grow, and I am praying for this church, I'm praying for the pastor, and I know that this church will be used greatly by God because uh, they are supporting missions in this way. 
there's a small church that um, they were so excited uh, that even with in limited funds they they gave and invested for for this farm and my, my hope is that um, other churches will see this example and testimony and they would be inspired to, to, to do the same and then they can say to themselves this is possible it's possible that we already have a God-given resources that we just need to cultivate and just use. It's already there. God has already provided. Nagaano kami na tumutulong kami para maano sa amin, kundi willing talaga kami magtulong doon. My name is Pastor Dong. Ito ang aming istorya. Ano ang sa inyo? Yes, and um, actually, is that giving money for the missionary and uh, raising fund is not so important. It's the most important part is uh, changing their perspective, and changing their priority, and changing their in the understanding of what's the core value and um, the reason to be exist as a church. So I brought this simple sentence from that video clip. So one woman. Actually, she speak in the it's a kind of a ruler language, but it translate in the English. She said, "We can put up with the leaking roof. They already they had even they had a leaking roof, but we cannot live without missions. That's that's the total change. That's the important. It's a not it's a matter of money and it's not matter of a so missionary abroad and something that. But, but this is can be some great change and transition." in the small church, even in the rural area. So it's a missionary church in local. So from now on, I'm gonna it's a, some show some kind of principle to be a missionary church. Most of all, this is very important. It's balance between the reading text and the reading context. Normally many churches are only reading text. They do not have a big concern outside of the church. They only think about inside of church. And the teaching and the service to have some kind of worship service and the read the Bible, it, that's good, but it's, it's not a whole thing for the church. Church also have some, uh, in the same it's a portions, they need to read in the context. So they look around and they need to find out what's going on around the church and then even the far away from the church. Then when you have a balance between the reading text and the reading context, it's, it's brought, it, it brings us to the better perspective to understand in our situation and um, help us to find out what will God want to us to want us to do in this area. So that is the kind of, can, is kind of some basic is a principle to be more missional. So this is uh, some kind of my recommendations. Uh, I, I uh, maybe I I can I can recommend some kind of books, but it will it's a uh, you need to pay it's a uh, you you need to pay money for that. But it's this pre actually this is not uh, it's not the reason why I recommend this uh, this document because it is free. It's very important document because it's from the Lausanne movement and Lausanne is a, we call that Lausanne occasional paper. And uh, there are around the, some kind of more than 60 papers. It's uh, to publish these papers, it's uh, more than 100 people gather together and they share their own experience and they share their story and um, even the, um, talk about and then discuss about then they condensed their decision and understanding is uh, into these papers. So you can download it from the Lozen movement. So, I recommend the three documents uh, to relate to the missionary church is uh, occasional paper number it's uh, 39 and 43 and 44. So when you check the title, it's the 49, it's the 39, it's the local church in mission. So, and um, the second one is uh, 43, it's the title is the reality of the changing expression of the church. And the last one is titled two third world church. So this document is uh, can be, greatly help you to understand a more practical way to this uh, practical way for the missionary church. So I brought some just one sentence from that is LP number 39. So he, it mentioned 
so he mentioned about constant model to be to move to the missional church. So one thing we need to overcome that is the constant model. You remember that is graph just uh, in the beginning of these lectures. You know that is uh, from the early church. Is the graph is uh, down to the very close to is the below that is uh, in the day of the Christendom. Christian the Constantine model mean that you know that is the Emperor's Constantine is uh, allowed the Christianity as a kind of a no so official religion and something that but from that times is uh, Christianity is grow pastly rapidly but lost many value and uh, it's a kind of uh, even even some kind of life of Jesus. The reason why I mentioned the life of Jesus through the times in the day of the Christendom. Many pastors and many some kind of saint only mention about some kind of God and some Old Testament principle and something that, but they seldom mention about some life of Jesus. Because when you mean it's a, their life is a totally different from the life of Jesus. So they do, didn't like to mention about the life of Jesus. So through the time we lost our core value and uh, beautiful legacy from the early church and then even we lost the life of church life of jesus and teaching of jesus then even we have a bigger building and even we have a more people in the church and in christian community but we lost many things as a true church and genuine church so that's why we need to overcome the it's a constant model another reason why we need to overcome the constant model mean that it's a many tradition is uh, even we, we even in church in africa and asia and in any country many part of our tradition from the constant model it's a we influenced the, from the western church and the many it's a tradition and preference is a rooted in the, the constant model so we want to be more like a missionary church and we want to be more like early church then we need to think about and discern is so what kind of thing is based on the constant model. Then is a, we need to overcome it to be more like a missional. So this document emphasizes a missional congregation abandon a constant model of the church life. I read this sentence. Without much effort, people came to our congregation and adopted to our culture. All to open Western missionary plant the constant congregation even in non-Christian land. In every age, there are those Christians who see the constant model as a flawed. They see the incarnation of Jesus as a call for the church to live its safe building and move into the world of those they are trying to serve. This missionary Christian adopt to the culture rather than ask those outside of church to change the culture to find God. They also sense a call to communicate Christ in the word and deed of the law, not invited people and just uh, sometimes forcefully bring people into the church building. They go to them and go for them as a, as some kind of a Christian, it's, a, it's Jesus. So here is some one, <clears throat> one thing I want to share. You know that uh, in the early church, when you look at the Acts chapter one to, one to two, then it's uh, this described as come, uh, some kind of a, so how how early church is a forming is a is a what kind of way they follow to be a early church. First thing is mission, actually mission. Acts chapter one verse eight, it's a Jesus is the proclaimed his is a kind of blueprint and a big plan for the whole nations. They receive the mission first, then they start to read the Bible to. It's uh, organized there, it's uh, some kind of structure and the leadership and something that. And when he moved to the chapter two, then when Holy Spirit came upon them, it's uh, then they became a church. It's a kind of a Pentecostal time they became a church. So it's the basic, it's a, the foundational, it's the most foundational thing is mission. Then it's the Bible has authority for the whole congregation then they became a church. So I call this, this a kind of embassy orders. So let, let, me, let us check this one. So when you see that Christian the model is a Christian in the era of the Christian, 
church looks like this. It's the biggest foundation and most important foundation is church. Institutional church has the most powerful authority for the whole things. Then next will be a Bible. Then over that is just the place, the mission work on that. So mission is just a part of the church ministry and only some kind of a department to expand the Christianity and something there. So basement is kind of fundamental and the foundation is the church, then Bible and then missions. When you move to the reformation time, that is the Bible became a most important foundation. Then church still mission, just a part of the church ministry. But missional church looks like a early church should be a mission, God's mission should be a core foundation and biggest foundation, then Bible and church. So church is kind of a church and Bible is kind of a product of the God's mission. It's mission is not optional. Mission is not kind of a department and any some kind of organizational work. This, it should be a, some kind of foundation of the whole, it's a church. So let's move forward, it's a move, move backward and then you, you can check this one that first one mission, over that is a Bible, then it's they become a church. So missionary church looks like this, not like a Christian model. Church decide everything, it looks like Christian. Even you are living in the 21 century, if your congregation, Regardless of the Bible, regardless of the mission, church board and the church leadership can decide everything is be like uh, the Christian model. So if your congregation looks like it uh, seems like uh, some mission model, God's mission should be a foundation. Then Bible can be help us to understand God's will and uh, it will be light on our work, light our foot and the walk. Then based on that, we can form and shaping the, our church. That's the mission of church. So here is another approach. So you remember the Nicanor Council to some define the, some true church and something that is very early day. In the day, so they decide the full distribute to, uh, to discern the true church. First one is one. First attribute is one. And second is holy. Third one is Catholic, and last one is apostolic. That is the essential for this tribute for the true church. But it uh, depends on the perspective. It's uh, interpreted in different way. In case of Roman Catholic, their perspective is kind of institutional perspective. So for them, one mean like a Roman is a center. So they they always emphasize the Rome is center for the whole church and the whole church have a center, it's a loam as a center. And the holy mean membership. It's a belong to church or not. That's the some kind of standard to discern the holy is a some kind of a holiness. And the third castling mean is uh the, for the Roman Catholic is transplanting. No matter where it is, just they they plant the same church with the Roman. So it's Clothes should wear the same way in, with the Roman and the, some kind of a building looks like a Roman, Roman Catholic and something that they always, it's a, they choose the transplanting way to expand. And the apostolic, they interpret it as a pop. So they is, uh, do believe the pop inherited some kind of leadership with Peter and something that. So in institutional perspective, they interpreted one holy, catholic, apostolic in this way. But when you move to the reformed, they have some kind of organizational perspective. It's against the Roman Catholic. So one is for them, one mean is body of Christ. And the holy mean Bible and sacrament and the communion, something that. And Catholic mean a gospel is truth. It's gospel is the truth everywhere. So everybody can read the Bible and they get to know more about Jesus and get to know more about God and something that they do believe that. But they deny the apostolic because they do not, do not admit to the, some kind of authority of the Pope. So they ignore it. That, what about the missionary church? For the missionary church, one means kingdom partnership. 
even you are different from the different kind of, if each of us has some different background and denominational background, but if they do believe the Jesus as a savior and the only one to save us, only one name to save us, then we can be a partnership for the, his kingdom. So one mean for the missionary churches, kingdom partnership. Holy means for the missionary churches, missionary life, not life in the church, not life in the weekend. It's an ordinary day and our normal life should be holy before God. And the Catholic mean is a local ministry. It's a mean that we can go abroad and we can have some kind of partnership with other church in other country. So it's a similar to the kingdom partnership, but Catholic under, it's a, for the missionary church, Catholic mean as a local ministry. And the apostolic is a mean for the missionary church is releasing people. Not, it's that on, only one thing can church do is a gathering people in the chapel, not like it. It's a missionary church always try to release people based on their calling and the God's missions. So even it's uh, just the same things, it looks like same thing, but it uh, depends on the perspective. Their own interpretation is totally different. So what I found based on my experience, missional can be some created some true unity because the institutional organization are totally different. If somebody emphasizes the institutional perspective, they cannot be unified with the organizational people. But missional is possible because when institutional people agree with the God's mission and organizational people agree with the God's mission, they can work together under the missional perspective. So we call the missional theology as a meta theology because it has some kind of a wide scope and the wide some some kind of a possibility to so hold different perspective. So institutional cannot be cre cannot create a true unity. Organizational cannot create a true unity, but missional can combine together. I already experienced a lot through my ministry. Actually, mission is a little bit distorted in the era of the Christendom. So I draw this uh, some kind of brief diagram to have to understand that, you know that word mission day mean is a God send. God send is a, is the origin of the missions. So it based on the John gospel chapter 17 and 20, we already read the John 20. It's a, Jesus say, as father sends me, I send you. So send you mean the mission day. God sends is mean the missions. So for a long time, it's a constant matter and the Christian matter. People is a forgot the, the, the word of the mission day. So they, they never use that one. But from the 9th, it's a 1544, some people restore the word mission day, not whole word, just the mission, not day. So they use, they start to use the mission as the name is, uh, some, some is uh, Catholic people so began to use that word to describe their activity for the outside. But through the time, only people think about mission is based on this word is, is kind of expanding, encountering. So, you know, it's a further expanding and encountering, we need power. Some is a kind of secular power like money, people and social system, something like that. So in these days, people think money and people and system is very essential for the mission work. You know, still many people believe, same, believe it same way because still they think for the mission, we need power. So they already think about money and people and systems and something that, and also they make an excuse. We cannot do our mission work because we do not have money. We do not have educated people and we do not have a social power and assistance. It based on this Christian model. God never said that because God just to, told, he said to the Abraham, just follow me and I will show you where you have to go. Everything belongs to God. But through the Christendom, it's an error. It's a distorted mission. It's a kind of matter of power. 
a mirror of a source and the mirror of some kind of system, something there. What I found, even we are living in the 21st century, so many pastors and so many is a denominational leadership and any kind of leadership believe this way. We need power for the God's mission. But it's totally wrong. Because if we use that kind of source for the mission work, it's going to be a man's own decision, not decision from the Holy Spirit. You know that early church didn't have any money, didn't have any people, didn't have any system. Even they didn't have any seminary and uh, anything. Only they have a Holy Spirit. Only they have an origin, divine origin. Then they move. So this is totally distorted through the Christian model. You know where we are now. Actually, that this kind, of, this diagram is expressed some kind of a mission history. But I, the reason why I brought this one is uh, the only one thing I want to emphasize: the importance of the local church. You know, we follow this uh, tendency that is uh, in the day of 19th century. In that day, most of people saw the mission is uh, in the view of the geographical identifications. It's a country and the location. So if you are missionary, you need to go to abroad. It's a, if you not go to abroad, you are not missionary, something like that. And we know the many is a kind of a, some heroic name, the William Carey and Hus Taylor and something that those people belong to this, day, this era. And the, in the days, that's the nature because gospel and Christianity is very limited, it's a located limited area, some kind of Europe and the North South America, something that. So we, we, we heard a lot of from that error. It's a kind of a fantastic and a, it's an amazing story. As a missionary, it goes some, as a frontier and a pioneer and something that those stories belong to geographical identification error. But world is changing. Because it's a, it's a China and uh, North, it's a South America, it's, an, it's no more, it's a mission field. They have more church, they have more believers than Western side. So people think about that, it's a, how can we do our mission work? The one day, like a life of winter, introduce some kind of anthropological identifications. So, we can define the people group as uh, some anthropological way. And then we can find uh, some unreached people and uh, we can focus on the unreached people. Then we can bring the, some kind of a second coming of Jesus, something like that. That's the 20th century. For now we are in the 21st century. You know, after the 1990, that is a borderline, a country border and uh, some anthropological border is meaningless because people is moving. They move to the other country and they move to the other city and the other place. So it's a one tribe not live in one place. If you go to the mega city and you can find a thousand kinds of tribes because they move into the city for the, for the getting money and some getting better job and something like that. So now we need to use that cultural identifications. It means that just look around and uh, if there is some your church, then when you look around your church, if there is uh, some people who don't know about Jesus Christ and uh, some kind of a hostility it's, uh, for the Christianity, you are in the mission field. That's the cultural identification. We are living in that era. It means local church, each local church have to open their eyes and open their heart for the God's mission. Now is the time of the local church. We don't need to a hero. We don't need to any kind of a once. It's a kind of a salad. It's a for the mission work. Now we need a great fellowship and a great congregation fully understanding about God's mission and their law and their the reason why they are exist and something there. So now is the time of the local church. Each local church should open their eyes and the committee of life and the congregation for the God's mission. Okay, sorry.
So here is very important. Uh, it's, uh, maybe it's uh, very helpful to understand about uh, it's a missionary church. Normally, it's the first time missionary is uh, go to the mission field. They follow the church growth model because there is nothing. So they need to some kind of growing. So normally, it's uh, if in the first stage, it's minister is follow the church growth model. Member is like an inviter. And um, conversion and baptism is most important. And uh, some kind of strategy planning is a kind of uh, how to approach them and how to get to some interesting and favor from them, something like that. And the one step is and two or three in small number of steps led. And the uh, reaching perspective and the gathering is important. And audition is a kind of understanding and uniformity will be there. And the anthropocentric is a very key, key, it's key point for the church growth model. And great commission is the most uh, important value for the church growth model. That is that every, everybody in the initial, initial stage needs to adopt the church growth model. But you know that it's the church is a living one. So should it be grow and should it be mature? So not, we cannot stay in the church growth level and the stage. But you know, still many modern church like to stay in the church growing. Even they have a thousand members, even though have a, there's a big building, still they want to stay in the church growth model. Still member are the inviter. Still they have only a small number of staff who led everything. And gathering is the most important thing. Maybe this kind of a church have a lot of trouble in the day of the post COVID-19. Normally people, normally church move from the church growth to the church as model. In different way, it's a kind of a small group church mo model. So they invite, it divided into the, some small group and the members as a minister, they work together. And each member, some in charge of the small group and the, in charge of some kind of ministry. They emphasize the discipleship and uh, they develop program and uh, uh, they became uh, some team leadership and the reaching community and training is important and internal group multiplication is the goal of their ministry and they experience diversity and the ecclesiocentric is a core perspective to understand their congregation and great commandment, love each other is so one of the best value for the church's model. That is good. It's a, normally I think most of the healthy church is stay in the, this kind of a model. But missionary church is that we need to step one more step to be a missionary church it looks like this members are missionary everybody has their own calling and they can do something for their own calling from god missional living is important it's congregation all right trade to the people empowering people and personal mission also valuable and transforming community is the goal of their ministry key word is not gathering and not training they call word is really You can go. It's where God show you. Then church planting multiplication and it's uh, more than diversity. It uh, looks like a mosaic and theocentric and the combine, we, we can combine the great commission and great commandment. So when you combine it, it can be a visual day. It's a, God called us to send us because, to be a blessing for the whole nation. So one thing you sh should keep in mind is, is a missional church is right, church grows is wrong. And I do not say that. We need to grow. We need to be mature. So we cannot stay church grows only. First stage, we can adopt that model, but we need to head in for the missional church. That's the natural way for the church, it's a, the body of Christ. Here is some, it's a helpful some quotation. Many people still have some understanding church as attractional. We evangelize by the marketing to people, get them to come to us. We try to produce events and worship gathering that are attractive to the demography. Come to church, that's the core goal. But it's different from the missionary church. Missionary church, be the church with me. Our evangelism is relational. We invest in people, society, living out our faith in Christ. We find the way go 
to go and live like Christ with people in their regular everyday activities. Living like a Christ in distinct, distinctly different, but not in irrelative, relevant. They has relevant mean that. Here is another typical model of the church, consumer church. Church is seen as a dispenser of the religious goods and service. People come to church to be fed and to have their need met through the quality, quality program and to have the progress, professional teaching their children about God. It differs from the missional church. Missional church, a body of people sent on mission who gather in community for worship, community encouragement and the teaching from the world in addition to what they are self-feeding themselves throughout the week. So I am the church. I go to church. It's totally different. It's totally different. You no know, typical foundation of church is a start from the weekend worship service and the mission is some part of it. But missional foundation of church is that the church mission of making disciples then weekend worship service is just the product and the kind of activity on the part of the church. You know, it's a, you understand this uh, kind of a cartoon that is a, there is a pastors, but everybody have some, uh, some opinion. So first man say, remember how much money I give each weekend. Second woman, make sure there are enough program for my kids. Another people say, tell me again, how much God want me, bless me. Bless, 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 or something like that. And on other people, please refer to sin as a bad choice. And other the women say, don't mention hell. It makes me feel uncomfortable. So you know that maybe you understand it's a very normal, not it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a, not, not weird. It's just normal church. But it's, uh, it means that it's really far away from the missionary church. So Francis Chan say like this, our greatest fear should not be of failure, but of succeeding at things in life that don't really matter. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish with the chart and I will show one other, one more is a slide because we, are, we have a time limit. So based on this, you can check your congregation and your future congregations. Conventional way only is, use Bible, it's a, some verse in the Bible to describe church and to describe the missions. But unconventional way, always use, try to use the whole Bible based on the whole Bible, they is a make understanding, they try to have an understanding for the church and mission based on the whole Bible. Conventional way, the worship is a kind of ritual, a regular meeting. But unconventional way, worship and mission is uh, integration, integrated. And even in terms, in the, when it comes to evangelism, conventional be like us first, but unconventional be like them first. Member, most consumer, but unconventional way, more like a missional, most lead producer. And training is the only for the better life. But training on in, the, in terms of the unconventional, be like Jesus, do like Jesus. Training happen in only classroom, classroom, but unconventional way looms for the classes. It, it can be, it, it, it could be happen in any place like Jesus do. And ministry church center, the Jesus center. Ongoing question is what church need more, but unconventional way, what word need more and mission conventional church with mission but unconventional church as mission missionary is a conventional way that some special people but unconventional all christians should be a missionary any kind of the missionary so i skip this and then maybe you can read this sentence when i share this slide and um, i show you one last slide Uh, the, I, I think it is very important quotations uh, done by Christopher Light. It is insufficient to proclaim that the church of God has a mission in the world. Later, 
the God of mission has a church in the world. You understand what this means? That actually, many people still believe the church of God has a mission. But it's a God of mission is a more, much more bigger than church. So we, can, we need to say that God of mission has a church. It's totally different. That is, uh, this is a kind of a historical prayer, a very simple prayer. Norman Grob is uh, one of our leadership in WEC history. Actually, his son-in-law uh, of the it's a city stud who found uh, our uh, it's a organization. It's uh, more than 90 years. It's a 90 years old lifelong player. Every morning, Norman Grob. And he, actually, he did great work. And Norman Grob, every morning, he gave this simple and very short prayer. Good morning, God. What are you up to today? May I be part of it? Thank you, amen. This is his daily prayer whole, through his whole life. But we found he always, always tried to be part of the God's mission. And he always tried to know more about God's intention and God's mission for today and for their own place. So it's, it's, I know it's not enough, but um, uh, maybe you can read uh, more sentence in my slide after these lectures. Um, but it's, uh, and you are not, it's a kind of a, it's a student who are some kind of a normal Christian. I should, I should be, I do believe you're gonna be a, some church leadership. So you have some responsibility for your own congregation and future congregation. And uh, depends on you, it's a whole people can go right way and um, sometimes go the wrong way. So you are very important and um, that's all for today. Thank you.